Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, it's the darkest timeline. So it's just just me. Just me talking to me. Well, I'm talking to you. Wait, did you not realise that? Uh oh. Uh, it's episode 250, which, using some quick maths, means that it's nearly five years of doing this podcast for nobody to listen to. Um, this week, we're talking about changing the seasons, uh, being proud of your children, um, and birthday parties. There are... Uh, TV and games, no movies I'm afraid, but uh, there's a long explanation about why that is. Before we get started, please do consider like, share, subscribe and comment. Leave a review where you can leave a review. Obviously the big one. Share the podcast around. Best way to get people in, into the crew, into the cookie cast crew. Share the podcast around. Right, let's get started. Here we go. This is cookie cast. The Darkest Timeline. Hello, how are you doing? No, not a a gruff voice, just a gruff start. I spoke to someone today who had lost their voice. And was just getting it back, and it sounded like they were—they literally had gravel in their throat. And I was like, "It's such a strange concept, like losing your voice." Like, I suppose it's one of those. Like, has anyone ever truly lost their voice? And it happens like once. I remember one time completely losing my voice. Um, so, yeah, and now everybody can, you know, take to the internet and say how horrifically wrong I am about that statement. Um, are you well, sir? Good, good, sir. Madam, person. Um... I have the crushing task of telling you that I wrote down on my list this week uh, a movie. Because I wrote it down with the words, yeah, I'll have definitely finished that by by Monday. Yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be scratching that off the list today. I have not finished the film I'm watching. Therefore, cannot discuss the film in question and... Have not watched any other movies this week, so no movie this week, I'm afraid. That is on me. I am, I'm physically holding my hands up right now. Um, I'll have to talk about other just as exciting things. Um, I've had this conversation twice this week. Oh, it's mild, isn't it? So, we need to go back a week to start this story. So, about a week ago, I, of all people, was like, I tell you something, this this winter thing's dragging on a bit now. Now, anybody who knows me, anybody who's listened to this podcast for more than five minutes, will know that I've had a tumultuous relationship with summer. Um, Short version, shortest version is, um, for a very, very, very long time, I hated summer. Um, Because, for me as a person, summer brought with it a lot of things I didn't like. Um... I am a horrific hay fever sufferer to the point of, like, crippling hay fever sufferer. Like, if I don't take hay fever medication, which, bearing in mind, we're in the middle of March at this point in time, 
I will have to start taking hay fever medication before the end of this month. Um, that's how bad it is. Um, the hay fever without the medication is crippling. Like, when I was little, before the days of variety of different medications and things, um, I used to start my day by having to soak my eyes open um, on a morning. So it's that kind of thing. Um, not a huge fan of the heat. And that's not to say that I don't like heat. I don't like... Basically, I don't like British summers. Um, muggy, warm, sweaty, horrible. Just You just don't feel like you can get a break from it. Um, and I am very much a winter person. Cold, put a jumper on. Still cold, put another jumper on. Still cold, stick a sticky coat on and some gloves and a hat and a scarf. Set fire to the room you're in. And that's me. That is how I, I work. You know, I am happier putting on six layers of clothing and sitting next to a portable radiator than I am in, like, shorts, a vest, flip-flops, and having, there's a year, I think it was, year before last, there was a day, hottest day ever, I think it was, all of that sort of stuff, and I had to go and have a, <laughs> have a siesta, the, it was the only, it was the only thing I could do, there was, there were no other options in my life, I had to take myself away, lie down, go to sleep only thing I had in, in in my life at that point in time um I don't do well in summer and I can just find many more ways to cope in winter my theory has always been the same you can always take layers off if you get too warm in the winter you really can't do that in the summer, it's just, it is just that. So, that brings us all up to speed, we're all on the same page. I reached a point where I was like, honestly, even for me, this, this winter has felt like a long one. And I imagine just being at the back end of the winter, it's probably that. It's probably like, even for me, I'm like... Okay, come on now, let's, you know, even just a bit of daylight would help, I suppose. Um, uh, you know, things like it'd be nice if it didn't rain and, and you know, all, all the, the dipping the toe into the water and that sort of stuff. Literally, the next day... I had a conversation with somebody where they said, oh, it's really mild today. Now, I didn't think that. I didn't agree with that. Um, at that point in time, I had driven from place to place, point to point, uh, whereas they had walked. Um, and they were saying, oh, you know, I wasn't prepared for it. And I had a coat on and all that. And I got here and I'm quite warm. Like, oh, okay. And because I didn't feel the same... I was like, oh, you know, didn't really think too much of it. A few, couple of days later, I don't think it was a few days later, a couple of days later, there was then this conversation about, oh, isn't it mild? By that, po by that point, I had already switched to... Leaving the house without a jacket of any description. And immediately regretted the moment in time where I was like, I mean, even even I'm thinking this winter's gone on a bit long. Honestly, normally on a on a on an office day, I park quite close to the office. So I don't really have that much of a of a walk. It's like Five, 
Maybe not even ten minutes. No dramas. Today, that was not an option for me and I had to park far, far away from the office and walk. Um, which is what I did. I had a jacket, did not wear it. I knew, I knew from the get-go not to make that mistake. So I, I hoofed it all the way across town to get to the office. And by the time I got there, I was like, I'm, I'm done here. I am out. I don't, I don't want this. I don't want to do this. What's super nice is obviously when you've hoofed it across town, got that little bit of a sweat going, you're carrying a big heavy bag, all that. Um, you then get to enter the office building where the temperature is uh, 400,000 degrees. Um, so it's such a super combination at the moment. I went in the gym this evening, went to work out, got halfway through my workout. I was like, it is far too warm in here. It's that stage where we still have the heating on for like drying clothes and stuff. And it's just the way, the way, you know, the way it is. But when you walk into a room and you can physically feel the heat coming from the radiator across the room, it's like, oh no, it's it's starting. It's that thing that I think it's like next Wednesday or something. I think I looked on the calendar and it was like next Wednesday is the official start of spring. But as far as I can tell, spring has already sprung. Um, I've been seeing people out and about. And it's like, oh, God, people everywhere. Uh, uh, there, was, there was children in the park playing football. Uh, and already, a matter of days into it not being freezing cold, I'm like, is it winter yet? So last week, um, I had I had the um, I don't know what you'd call it. Like I had a series of events where it made being a parent worthwhile. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Ultimately, being a parent, it's not. <laughs> it's not as glamorous as it might seem. Um, in a lot of ways, I consider myself to be quite fortunate because um, a percentage of my children, um, for want of a better way of putting it, I don't particularly have to worry. Um, it's kind of that simple. Um, and then um, for... Uh, another percentage of my children, I have that kind of, I don't have to worry about you out of the house. I just have to worry about you in the house. And then uh, a percentage of my children is like, I need to put you, you you need to be uh, in a bubble. You're a child that needs to be in a bubble. And that's that, you know. So in, in a situation like that, I feel... In a lot of ways, quite fortunate because it's like, well, I have a percentage I don't feel I necessarily have to worry about. So I'm wi- I'm already winning. I could be one of in one of those situations where I've got X number of children, and for a variety of different reasons, I'm worried about all of them. Now, I will caveat that by saying I fully expect that that's just a matter of time. Uh, so, you know, I'm not saying that this is the way it's going to be forever. Um, so, Monday, um, got the opportunity to go and watch, uh, my daughter's dancing. Now then. I'm just checking out. 
maybe I'm, I feel like I spoke about it. But then, just double checking, doesn't look like I did. Okay, that's good. So I've got the opportunity to go and see my daughter doing her dancing. Um, youngest daughter, because the, the older two daughters um, did a show. So you, you've seen them live, perform live, so you don't get to see them again until the next thing. That's the way it works. Seems seems fair. I go off to watch my daughter, and I'm like, okay. I haven't seen her dance for a little while. She did a show a little while back. Um, haven't seen her dance since then. So in my head, I've got an idea of what her dancing should look like. So she does her dance show. No, not dance show. She does her dancing in the lesson, and I'm like, she's good. She knows it. She knows what she should be doing, when she should be doing it, and how she should be doing it. That is what you want from a dance type situation. What more could you ask for? However, and it's not a bad however, it's a, it's a good however. Uh, the good however is in a group situation, 10, 15, 20 children kind of thing, Behaviour is always be going to be an issue. And I said to her afterwards, I was like, your dancing was amazing. You're really good at it. You really know it. And anything that you don't quite know and you can't quite do, I can see that you're really working on. And her response to that was, well, I do try my best. And I said, that is all that matters to me. And then I said, what was almost as good as your dancing was your behaviour. Your behaviour was beautiful. Fantastic behaviour. Um, just, it just really stood out. And in those situations, good behaviour stands out for the obvious reason. Because there are children there that are not behaving. So, the well-behaved children stand out immediately. And it was nice to be able to say that my daughter was one of them. If not quite high on that list shall we say so i was like cool i got to see her doing her dancing and i also got to see that her behavior in this situation is good it's it's very good cool big tick in a big box and away we go i'm like hey you did well um she got a she got a gift uh yeah, I'll leave that one there. Um, and that's that. So, a couple of days later, me, Billy Big, Billy Big Brain over here, has not one, not two, no, 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 three parents' evenings to go to. So, Billy Big Brain says, here's how it's going to break down. I'm going to book the first one. Then 20 minutes later, I'm going to book the second one. Then 20 minutes after that, Gonna book the third one. Reason being is plenty of wiggle room on time, these things overrun. Gives me X amount of time to look at the child's book slash books and then get in and have the conversation with the teacher. I arrive at the school. Couple of minutes to spare. Bosh. Yeah, the thing that you can't predict in this situation is the first teacher runs 15 minutes late and then I go in to talk to her about uh, one of my children. I'm like, well, that's everything backfired on me right there. Anywho, go in, sit down on the tiny, tiny chairs. I will have, I'll have mentioned this before. I understand Little people need little chairs. I am not in any way, shape or form a little, a small, a whatever you want to say. I, I can't sit on a chair that is designed for a child. Get some bigger chairs, people. I don't, I don't get it. Two chairs that are not tiny anyway 
sit down. Tidge is like, right, okay, let's go through some of the stuff. They're like, bang, 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 bang. I'm like, cool. Got any questions? I was like, if I'm honest, if I answer all my questions, that's that. Me thinking, tick tock, tick tock. Tidge goes for a second go in on it. Bear in mind, by this part, I am like, I am way over my appointment time for the second teacher. So, we have various conversations. Um, I didn't feel I didn't feel rushed because I was like, "Hey, if this one's running, if this teacher's running late, maybe the next one's running late. Whatever." I walk out of the classroom. I walk across the hall, pick up my daughter's books, open the first book, and the door opens. Ah, oh, are you here for so and so? I absolutely am. Okay, come on in. Cool. I walk through the door. First question. Did you get a chance to look through her books? I did not. We're going. Sit down. Now. This is going to be a surprise. I know. But I have four children. You may or may not have heard this before. Um, I always think I know. Each of my children. I always think I know. Their individual personalities. And I always think I know about where they are. And as a parent, that is pretty much the biggest mistake you can make. Because ultimately, your children will always surprise you in the best and worst possible ways that you can not imagine. It is as simple as that. So always, it's like this misconception. So I am I know what the first teacher's basically gonna say i think i know what the second teacher is gonna say and i have a reasonable idea what the third teacher is gonna say obviously when that teacher then goes off book and starts talking about this child is doing amazing in this 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 and this she is performing way above expected in these areas and you're like oh all right right yeah, yeah yeah like you know a couple of points away from higher like, higher than expected it's like oh well that's good then yeah it's really good like uh, okay then cool so i come out there i'm like i am two children down two glowing parent teacher conversations in the bag i feel like a freaking bander at this point in time because i'm like can i just run away now with my two out of three ain't bad i'm like i guess i gotta go and do the third one i go i pick up what could only be described as a mountain of books so how many book? How many subjects are they doing? And I guess it's just one of those things that the more subjects they add, the more books they need. The more subjects they have, the less they get through. So there was books that were going back like two years. I'm like, I don't have the time to look through two two years worth of work. Work. Give me the cliff notes. So I was just like looking for like more up-to-date stuff, because I've worked on the principal, I've seen stuff that's two years old before. Eventually, go in to teacher number three. Uh, we sit down, and she does what I didn't expect, because she asked me how my daughter was doing, and I was like, I, I, I think you're mistaken how this works. I'm here so that you can tell me how she's getting on. Um, but it was one of those. She was, she was very, you know, she was like, how do you think she's getting on? I'm like, I, I, I've asked her and she says she's doing well. Is, is that the right answer? I felt like I was being quizzed on something. Um, and she was like, no, I'm just, I just want to make sure that, you know, we're all on the same page here. I was like, okay. Well, you know, this is where I think we're at. Do, do you want to tell me whether I'm right or not? 
She was like, yes, you are correct. So she showed me this breakdown of, again, here's where you, here's where your children should be. Well, no, sorry. The first level is, here's where you don't want your children to be. The second level is, here's where you do want your children to be. And the third level is, in an ideal world, everybody's going to be in the third level because that's the higher level, higher learning, higher expectation. Um, so teacher basically went through, ticked everything off and was like, bang, 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 bang. Uh, yes, she has um, improved performance in these areas. These areas are still good and this is higher than expected. And I'm like, okay, kind of waiting for the for the other shoe to drop sort of situation. Uh, she was like, we've been through this, we've been through that, we've been through the other. I was like, okay. She's like, uh, we've also spoken about this. I was like, right. And that was that. And I walked out. Um, and I know it's not that time of year, but I, I did feel a little like the Grinch in the sense that my, my heart grew two sizes. I was like... <sighs> Obviously, not obviously, but there's a possibility that this won't, won't last. There's a possibility that one of those three children will slip somewhere. You know, we're going to start seeing, like, harder times ahead. Um, obviously, once you start adding, like, secondary school and secondary school problems into uh, the mix, you're going to... It just opens up a, a bigger a bigger world and a bigger set of problems. But right now, <laughs> I'm just like, yay. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there is an aspect of I don't feel like I can take responsibility for... Well, if I'm honest, I don't feel like I can take responsibility for any of it. They certainly haven't got my brains. So that's the first thing. They certainly don't have any of my academic abilities because I don't have any. I don't have anything to give. I am one fraction of a level above a bag of potatoes when it comes to, like, academia. And in the this child has to put work in this area, I can't impact that. Other than saying, you need to put work in this area, do you think you can do that? Yes, I think I can do that. Cool. Let's go and do something fun. That's kind of my input. So I'm a bit like, I don't feel like I can take any sort of responsibility, but I'll certainly, uh, I'll certainly take the, not the credit, but you know what I mean. Run away like a bandit in the night. Um, and then, yeah, everything after that was like, I don't know, they did that. I tried, to, I tried to tell a series of people. And obviously, you know, if you try and tell somebody that doesn't have children how proud you feel about your children, it doesn't really have the effect. You try and tell somebody that's like, oh, it feels super proud for this child. It's like, yes, I am aware. That child is also my child. It's like... Yeah, I know. It's like, you know, that kind of thing. Know your audience and there's no audience. Um, so, yeah. I have I have been having super fun um, internet problems. Uh, I imagine I'll have gone through um, the, the, the interesting ins and outs. I say interesting, but the ins and outs of losing all internet and what that entailed. Um, and regaining said internet. And then two days later, losing internet and it coming back and going again and coming back and going. Again. Basically, it's been like that since. Over the course of a day, on average, you'll lose internet a couple of times. Um some points of the days, on certain days, it's been over the space of an hour, you've lost internet three to four times. 
And yes, it is always when one of us is working from home. So it's super inconvenient, super annoying. I contacted the useless internet people and was like, hey, this is tiresome. And they were like, oh, right, yeah, let's get let's get you sorted. I uh, just need to ask you some questions. Obviously, it's one of those things. Over the last couple of weeks, I have contacted my internet provider multiple times for multiple issues to try and get those issues resolved. And because of this, my interactions, I have sort of started taking note of certain things. As time has gone on, I've been a little bit like... Something weird here. Um, Some of the questions I've been asked... Are... Not relevant. For example, if I say to you... Let's say, for example, you are my internet provider. And I say to you, my internet doesn't work. What do I want you to do? Fix it. Correct. Your question to yourself and to others is, how do we go about fixing this? You could say to me, I don't know. Are you the account holder? Yes, yes, I am. I hold the account. Um, can you confirm your address? That would be a, a, a question to ask. What, what sort of problem are you having? Viable question. We're all on the same page here, yes? You're my internet provider. You ask me those questions. I answer them, we are closer to a solution. Agreed? So, as my internet provider, asking me how many rooms there are in my house probably doesn't have a lot to do with getting my internet fixed when I'm saying I have lost all connection to the internet. What is the relevance there, I ask you? Um, Oh, how many floors does your house have? How far away is your work computer to your internet router? Mm, What? What sort of device are you using to contact us today? Does it have 3, 4 or 5G? What? These are actual questions I have been asked in the attempt to get my internet sorted. When the two engineers came to sort out the internet and they told me that the issue was at the box and the cable had been cut and they replaced it and then spent an hour here doing who knows what, they absolutely 100% assured me we can tell that it's not, that the problem's not here because all of your equipment working perfectly. Okay, cool. We'll go to the box and they went to the box, found the problem was at the box, job done. Uh, the last conversation I had with my internet provider was this. Oh, um, I've checked all of your all of your equipment. I've done a, a speed test and another test and an equipment test that I can do from here. And you need a new router. A lot can change in two weeks, apparently. I've started to think that the my internet is broken question opens the floodgates for data gathering of all manner now then i'm not gonna i'm gonna whistle blow telltales out of school or any of those sorts of things but i will say this i do find it very interesting who the provider of the router is for my internet provider 
Now, somebody listening to this right now knows exactly what I am talking about. Um, I find it very interesting that that provider for that router and the questions that I get asked on a almost daily basis by my internet provider, I can't see any correlation between the two personally, but that's just me. Um, we have a birthday coming up. Ooh. And, um, you know, when it's birthdays, you have a party. So, um, myself and Leanne carefully planned, plotted, schemed, and whatever to get the perfect day for the perfect party. Um, my daughter wanted a particular type of party and our answer was very simply no because as a child of a particular age she wanted the exact same party she had last year that makes no sense you've done that let's do something else luckily for us a previous child of mine had a party at a particular place and my other daughter was like hey i'd like to go there and i said that's perfectly fine even if it is horrifically expensive you know when you've hit for better or worse hit on something when parents at the party comment to you about, oh, you know, it's, it's interesting that you've had this party with how expensive it is. And I'm like, is it? Is it expensive? There's more than... What, other people wouldn't pay to come here? What What's going on right now? Um, so, previous birthday party was had at the place we went to. Uh, my daughter says, I want my birthday there. And I said, that's fine. And I had a conversation with Lan, and she's like, I thought you said it was super expensive. And I was like, oh, yeah, it was. She was like, uh, okay. Can she not go somewhere else? But like, I guess. Um, but we went back as far as the, the other place we wanted to go. Uh, it was uh, new, but they had booking slots available. However, their um, age range was super strict. You could have the age of the child who was having the party and like a year either side and that was it. Which meant all of my other children could not join in. No good to anybody. We'd obviously arranged it so that all of the children could join in. So uh, when one of my children went off to a friend's for a sleepover and one of my children couldn't join in the the main party that left uh, the child whose party it was and another of my children so yeah all that planning went right out the window um, but hey ho that's how it goes isn't it so we go and i'm like look this costs a fortune to go here however don't expect to get any level of service for the massive bag of cash you give them. As far as like a paid for party with like, you know, party people, hands down one of the worst for keeping you in the loop sort of thing. Um... I imagine if you jump back six weeks in the podcast, there's probably a conversation where I'm talking about exactly the problems and issues I had with this place. Now then, to give them their dues, this time was better. The person that was assigned to us, the party person that was assigned to us, uh, a young lad, comments may have been made about his age, and in the kind of 
I, I'm surprised he's, you know, working at one of these places, doing a party and not attending one. Um, but, you know, got to give these things a chance. Turned out that he wasn't 14. And, um, yeah. And he did very, he did a very good job. You can't knock him for that. Um, he was very, very attentive. He did um, everything. Now, because I'd said, do not expect any level of service, Leanne was right in there, asked all the questions that we needed to know, got all of the information so that we could be prepared. So then I'm like, maybe last time it was just me not doing what I was supposed to do. I can't possibly imagine that's the case, but, you know, stranger things have happened. So, we go, we get there, we're early. Which, I, I, sometimes I feel it's unusual with all those children and all that situations and having to take my daughter to her sleepover and make sure all that stuff. And we were out doing activities in the morning and I had to get back. I had an hour to walk the dog and shower. Um, a real tight hour to get all that done. Um turned up 20 minutes early so we get there 20 minutes early my lot are ready to rock and roll and i'm like you're gonna have to wait you can't go in yet um luckily in a lot of ways a lot of people turned up early half of the the group of people that were supposed to be there turned up early and i think because of that that kind of spurred the organizers to just get started pretty much straight off the bat and what was interesting was the person came and was like are these all the children is everyone here because we've checked the numbers and they're not not all the numbers are here do you want to wait and i was like no get started now i do not wait because waiting just just start just get on with it so the, the guy's like, okay, gathered all the children and was like, right, see you later. And they left. And I was a bit like, now now what? Um, my son wanted to get involved, wanted to get stuck in. Uh, obviously couldn't because of the um, age difference. Uh, but there was, there was a little play parky type thing that he could go on. Uh, more money. Uh, he went off to do that. I'm literally sat like, so now what do I do? Um, oh, I'll go and get myself coffee. So an exuberant amount of money later, I got two cups of coffee and uh, pulled my trousers back up. Um, sat, drank a coffee, was a bit like, should I go and check what's going on? I'll do that. That seems like a thing that I should be doing. I wandered through. We'd had this thing that there was like X number of children had arrived. A couple of them had arrived while they were sorting everything out. And we just worked on the principle that a couple weren't going to be there. Even though there'd been quite a deal about a couple of them being there. Like, can we do this? And can we do that? And can we do the other? It was like, yeah, sure. I went through to check on the party. And one of the children who hadn't um, arrived at the party, which seems strange, but, you know, things happen. One of the children that hadn't arrived at the party was just in the place. I'm like, I guess, I guess they are here, just not, just not in the party. The most ironic thing then was that the party then entered this area, at which point this child left. <laughs> and I'm like, what is happening right now? <laughs> <coughs> so that was that. Um, so they all had play and they were having a great time and it was like, right, it's time for something to eat. We go, all the kids get sat down. They start bringing their food out. 
And I'm like, is that it? <laughs> they brought two pizzas um, for 15 kids. And what equated to a hot dog each. And I, now I am very much in the camp of, I don't need there to be an abundance of food that's going to ultimately go in the bin. That is not not for me, thanks. I do want there to be enough food. <laughs> so when certain children start saying, oh, can I have some more pizza? And the answer is no, because there isn't any. <laughs> and I'm just like, what is happening here? It was so it was so weird. I've never seen anything like it. I've seen it where like you go to a party and there's plenty of flu- pen- puh, plenty of food to start with, and then you get so far through it and you're like, I'm not sure if this food's gonna last. And then the, right at the end, all of a sudden, all the children disappear. And you're like, well, there turned out there was plenty. This was not that. The two pizza boxes were empty straight away. And all the hot dogs were on all the plates straight away. And it was very much a, and that's your lot. Um. So, yeah, some, some disappointment. Um... I, I overheard a conversation between a child and their parent uh, where the child was completely refusing to eat anything. And they said the phrase, I don't want pizza. And I... Whew, that was a hard one to uh, to witness. Who doesn't want pizza? Well, from me, obviously, but, you know. Um... We did a cake and uh, stuck a sparkler in it. Couldn't get the sparkler to light. It was one of those just, it just would not light. And the whole time, like, everybody sung happy birthday. And then I'm like, this this fucking thing won't light. Uh, brilliant. And then I was out, they all went off to play. Um, and that was that was it. And we, we you know, another party under our belts were mostly successful um the party was several days before my daughter's birthday as i said so that all of her siblings could attend and then not all of her siblings attended um and then now (laughs) she's got like 15 gifts just sitting there staring at her. She's like, can I open my presents? Like, no, it's not your birthday. <sighs> a, a random one to finish on. Uh, the other day, uh, I don't know what I don't know what made me think this. Um, other than I was walking up uh, a, a slight incline, um, and I had a flashback. To when I to one of the first runs I ever did, uh, when I was hugely overweight, because obviously I'm not anymore. <laughs> um, um, when I was hugely overweight, and I went for a run, and I was passing the exact point where I sustained an injury. I took a back injury, and I had this like this crossroads where I was like, oh, I can quite easily lean on this injury to say that I don't have to run anymore. Or I can just say, I, I, I don't care that I've hurt my back. I need to do this. I need to keep moving. Uh, I chose the second option. One of the best things I ever did. Going through all of that in my head, I was like, I tell you something. I, I'm so glad that I don't have touch wood. Um, back problems I think it would be you know I I have in my life suffered horrifically with like pain and back pain a variety of different things and in in a variety of different ways sometimes like completely debilitating back pains and other times just ow my back hurts so and everything in between and I was like I'm really glad uh, at this point in time, I, I don't have to 
suffer through a, a, a back pain or a bad back. I got out of bed the next day and went, oh, that hurts. Honest, honestly, if somebody can explain that one to me, I'd, I'd, I'd like that. I was like, is this some sort of psychological thing? Because basically, since then, I've had this back pain. And I'm like, that can't be a coincidence. There has to be a direct correlation between the two there. Oh, I'm really glad I don't have back pain. 12 hours later, there was a point yesterday where I said, I'm going to have to sit down because I'm in so much pain. And this was first thing in the morning. And I was like, this is going to make an amazing day. So, yeah, what's that one all about? couple of tv things this week I watched episode two and three of full swing season two um second episode is about the um, pj and the live merger um that that whole situation proper sucks that was the biggest, wettest fish to the face for a lot of people. And I mean a lot of people. Most of all, got to be Rory McIlroy. Honestly, the size and the, the sheer wetness of the fish. You, you couldn't help but feel sorry for the multimillionaire. Um... It's one of those. I I quite like Rory. Rac oh, Jesus, I quite like Rory McIlroy. Um, I think he's you know seems like decent enough guy in a lot of ways for somebody who's a famous golfer, and he seems to play good golf. What more could you want from a golfer? Um, so yeah, you do kind of feel sorry for him because he has just been shafted at that point in time. Uh, moving on to episode three brings back a um a favorite from series one uh joel damoth is it um he was very in the first season he was very much a guy that just just played golf and had a great time didn't care if he was ranked 180th out of 180 golfers in the world um but then there was a point in time where he actually there's this running thing that um, if he tried to be a good golfer, he could. And there was a point in the first series where that's what he did. And he went on to win some stuff. Uh, and it basically appears that since then, he considers that was the worst thing he could have ever done. Because um, now he's got this different kind of fame off the back of the TV series. Um, and... There's this pressure for him to be the particular type of golfer. And he just kind of wants to go back to being, for want of a better way of putting it, average as far as a PGA golfer is concerned. Below average as well might be a thing. Um, but then there's a variety of things that highlight that that's not actually all that good for him. It's not good for his wife and his child and his caddy and the people that care for him. So it's like an episode of where he's kind of like, I might need to do something about this. Um, so that's been good. Been enjoying that. Uh, me and Leon sat down to watch episode one of Shogun. A very highly reviewed show. Um, it's been fine and good and dandy. So you know, for a, for a first episode, it was over an hour. Um, however, sixty to eighty percent of it is subtitled. I have no issues with subtitles. Um, little did I realize that um, subtitles are a real issue for some people. Apparently, 
Um, I have an issue with subtitles. What I do have an issue with is if somebody says a line and that line needs to be subtitled, if you flash an entire sentence of subtitles up on the screen for less than a second, how the fuck am I supposed to know what's going on? And how is that even even a, a thing? That's not a thing. Maybe a, a character is talking quickly. You need to find a way to have that information up on the screen. You can't just not have it be be able to be read. Now, if it had happened once, I'd have been like, oh, there was this one subtitle that went super fast and I thought it was broken. No, it happened multiple times through the first episode. Super bizarre, super annoying. Because, hey, you can't understand what's going on if it's in a different language and you can't read the subtitles. So strange. Such a strange thing. Um, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to swap the last two around. Like I say, I have got a film on my list, but I haven't finished it, so I can't, I can't talk about it. Uh, I'm going to swap the games around. I have been playing PlayStation. I've been playing Diablo 4. It's going fine. It's going great. It's it's very good. It's a very it's a very good looking game. Some beautiful like set pieces. It just it just looks amazing. The only thing I ever wish with with the Diablo games is that they weren't top down games. I I, I wish they were like more of a third person game. In that sense, because the the areas look amazing, and I honestly would like to experience them in a different format. Um, but you have to play the hand you dealt. So I, I I don't know what else I can tell you other than I have been playing it. That that's kind of it, really. So, although I have been playing Diablo Four, I have been playing it. A little bit when I've not been playing on the VR. The VR I've been playing is Asgard's Wrath 2, as we know. So, I'm going to get a drink, wet the whistle, so that I can get through this. Zero um, percent Guinness. Mm. Delightful. So, Asgard's Wrath 2 is a 10 out of 10 game. Do you remember that from last week? And I said, incorrect. Asgard's Wrath 2 could be a 10 out of 10 game. However, it's a 9 out of 10 game because it has some severe drawbacks. So, whereas this game is fantastic... There are things that let it down and let and, and ultimately stop it from getting what is a perfect score. 10 out of 10. My question would be, would it still get 10 out of 10 if it was 92%? And that's the sort of thing we're talking about. So, here's the things that have been wrong this week, and this is why... It went from a 10 out of 10 game to a 9 out of 10 game. Let's see what score we're at this week. Some of the puzzles in this game are just too much. Um, I have got no issues, qualms or whatever telling you, the lovely people, that I am not the smartest man in the world. Not even the second smartest man. I am what most people would describe as an idiot. Because of my idiot status, I do not have the brain power or capacity to be able to do things. If you then put into a game a difficult puzzle, I am basically out of luck. If you put into a game a puzzle that's you know, quite doable, I might stand a chance. And Asgard's Wrath 2 does this thing where it's like, 
here's a puzzle. Like, okay, I can do this. Cool. Here's another puzzle. Hmm, this is a bit harder. I'm a bit... I'm not... Uh, not sure. Hmm. Okay, let's just... Oh, maybe it's this. Yeah, you're right. It is that. Cool. And then it does this thing where it's like, I'm like, I, I, the only way I can see to do this is by doing it this way and it's not working. So I'm going to have to take the headset off and I'm going to have to look it up. You take the headset off and you look it up and you go, oh, so the way that I'm trying to do it is absolutely the way to do it. It's just not working. Cool. So there's been that problem. Problem number two. I got a new character. So the principle of the game is you are a god. And you possess uh, mortals. So the first one was... <sighs> nope, can't remember his name. Um, but basically, the first part of the game plays like VR God of War. You're a character that can throw weapons. You've got multiple different types of weapons you can throw. And the God of War comparison is not lost on this game. Because it's basically stolen a lot from the 2018 God of War. And I'll probably leave that there. So. I keep going to say the name and I can't think what the name is. Um, comes a point where. You've done what you need to with the human character you've got. And that's the end of that time with that character. And you get a new character who's very much like a, a bit like a Pandora person. Um, so it's a water person, uh, different weapons, different abilities. Weapons that personally I don't think are as good, which immediately feels like a step backwards. Um, you don't have as many weapons at this point in time. I have three weapons instead of four. The three weapons are very different. One is uh, a shooting weapon, one is a melee weapon, and one is a what I would refer to as a turret weapon. You throw it and it does its own thing, shooting enemies. Um, I get so far and I'm like, I, I'm not a fan of this character. This character feels... Um, weaker in a lot of ways their uh, weapons and attacks and abilities are not as good um, quite early on you get a new companion so at this point in time I'm up to three companions however two of the companions are very similar in the sense that you can transform them into mounts to ride All Right? okay well you know I'm playing as this character that I'm not overly enamoured with and I've got another companion who's very similar to one I've already got and I've got these weapons that aren't great and then the game says to me hey did you know that you can actually play as the previous character and I was like I didn't know that I kind of suspected it kind of hoped that and now yeah I kind of want to change to the other character and there was a point in time where I had this like actual dilemma where I was like, if I switch to that character, am I not playing the game as I'm supposed to be? Got so far, could, had basically made a decision to switch characters and then realised that wasn't going to help me because the character the game wants you to be, the, the female water person, has an ability that is used for solving puzzles in the game. Um, your shooting weapon is a harp and you need to play the harp to water sprites to get them to move to where you want them to exactly so that was that thirdly thirdly and finally for the second time I have done something in this game I have got so far and I have said I physically cannot progress any further and i don't think it's me i think it's the game 
And if I didn't know better, I think that the game hasn't told me something. Again. So, I go to my trusty video guide that I've been dipping in and out of. And I look it up. And there's a point where it's like, oh, tell your companion to do this. And I went, my companion can't do that. And then I realised the reason my companion can't do that is because I don't have the same companion. Oh. I zip the video back a bit. I'm like, mm, okay, so there's mention about an area that I haven't been to. I haven't been to because the game hasn't said to me, hey, by the way, you need to go here. You need to get a different companion because the bit coming up, you need that companion for and cannot progress past that point without them. This is the second time the game has done this. Yes, there is a mission, but it's a side mission. You cannot progress in the main story without completing the side mission, but as we all know, side missions are optional. You don't have to do them. But in this case, this one isn't optional and you absolutely do have to do it. Second time this has happened. Just say, hey, to complete this mission, go and do this side mission first. Or, what made it worse, I looked up the quest mark for this mission I'm doing, and it told me I needed the companion that I already had. Which was incorrect. That companion didn't help me in any way, shape or form. The one I needed was the one I didn't have. So put that as the clue. Tell me the companion I need is one I don't have. That way I know, as the player, to go and find that companion. Go and get that companion. What's the score, I ask? I hear you ask. The answer is at this point in time it's 8 out of 10 I can't slice it any other way there are aspects of this game which are phenomenal there are aspects of this game that are like playing God of War 2018 for the first time and in VR the scale, the grandeur of this game is off the charts it's like nothing you have ever seen I don't want to spoil anything, but there are points where you are looking at things that are truly giant. And you're like, as a game developer, as the people who made this game, how did they get the sheer scale of things? It's just, it's off the charts at points in time. However, as a game... It also has a multitude of drawbacks. At this point in time, it's 8 out of 10. Join me next week to find out if it's 7 out of 10. There we go. That is that is everything from my list. That is this week. And, uh, yeah. Till next time. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. So there you go. What do you think of that? Another one done, another one gone, another 250 episodes gone. Not, no, you know, there was two, that, that's, it doesn't matter. Um, big thank you, big thank you for being here for 250 episodes, if you've been here that long. I mean, I'm, I almost feel sorry for you at this point in time. <sighs> Before you go, please do consider like, share, subscribe and comment. Leave a review where you can leave a review and check out the website thecookiecast.com oh that reminds me I should probably uh, yeah need to uh, need to pay for that uh, yeah cookiecast.com we've got social media links and an email button so that you can get in touch with us that is it for 250 episodes of the podcast join me next week for episode 251 
Until then, I'm going to say bye, and I'll see you then. Thanks for listening. If you liked this episode of Cookie Cast, please like, share, and subscribe.